Hi Chubbix. This is the final touch. Looks good there, doesn't it? Hmm. But does it deserve to stay there? Now first let me tell you about Final Touch. Final Touch is a card game for two to four players where the players are painters working in a warehouse and you're all working together. You're, f you're making forgeries basically. Um, but you're all sneaking in at different hours of the day and you're adding a bit of colour here and a bit there and a bit there. And it's the player that adds the final touch to the painting, that last little bit that's needed, that can run off with the painting and sell it to get points. And obviously, what do points make? Points make a winner. You were going to say prizes, but that's a catchphrase for someone else. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to play the final touch. I'm going to give you my review of the final touch, and then I'm going to tell you if it's my cup of tea, and then I'm going to leave it to you to decide whether this is a game that should be hanging on your wall or should be still left in the store. In the box you will find this very small but very well written and laid out rule book which will explain the rules of the game and after one read you will understand everything. Also inside the box is this lovely little insert which holds two decks of cards. Number one, the first deck of cards is these colour cards which the players will have in their hand and there's five different colours and as you can see there's nothing much to them apart from colour. But also there's this second deck of cards. These are the paintings that you are going to be painting. And on one side they have very well famous paintings, like a bit of Salvador Dali there, and some points marked in the corner. And on the back they have how much paint is going to be used to make this painting, and also a lower score. Now the good thing about this box insert is that you can actually use it while playing the game. It can hold all the cards from your draw deck to your discard deck. And you can use it, very practical. At the beginning of the game, you take the deck of painting cards and you place them face down so you can see the colors that are required to do the painting on top. Now you can use the insert if you wish, um, but for the purposes of this video, I won't. Um, and then you place the top card from this painting deck just underneath it. This is going to be the painting that the players are working on. And as you can see, it requires two dabs of yellow and two dabs of brown to complete it. Um, if a player completes the painting, they will get four points as marked on top of the easel. But if this painting gets spoiled, players will get two points as marked in the corner. So this is going to be the painting that you're working on. And this is going to be the next painting that you're going to be working on. So you can see what you're going to need for the next round. Because this painting may get done and you might lose out on those points. But at least you, maybe you can prepare for the next painting. Now you choose your start player however you wish. Like uh, the player that last used a paintbrush for something other than painting, for example. Um, they will deal out five cards to each player. The remaining paint cards will go in the middle of the table to form a draw pile and you'll place a discard pile right next to that. Now let's say on my turn, this is my hand, I can decide what I want to do. I can contribute to this painting or I can try and spoil it. Now I'll go through the contributing. I've got two yellow cards, I've got no brown cards, so what I'm going to do on my turn is I'm going to play Risk and I'm going to contribute two yellows towards this painting. Okay, I'm taking a great risk there. And that leaves me with three cards left, and there's nothing else I can do. I could have just paid one, but I'm gonna pay two. And now I draw up my hand size back up to five, and then play passes to the next player. The next player, they're looking at their hand of cards, and they go, oh, um, you know what? Uh, I've got a yellow, but it ain't gonna do nothing. I've got brown, I'm gonna contribute as well. And so I'm gonna put that there. So they're gonna contribute a brown, and then they draw back up to their hand size. Back to me. I think, woohoo, Shugun tonight. This is a brown which will finish this painting. And so I will claim this painting, and I'm lucky. I turn it over, and I place this in front of me, and it gives me four points at the end of the game. These cards then go into the discard pile, and then we bring down the next painting. And obviously I draw back up to my hand sizes five, because that's the end of my turn. And then the next player, 
will do the same thing. They will pick some colors and they go, okay, I'm gonna play the blue and the yellow and the pink. There's a lot of paint in this picture. There's a lot of paint. So it's gonna be a while before anyone gets up to anything. And then they draw back up to their hand size. Now that's not the only action you can do. The other action you can do is you can try and spoil the painting. So if you don't want to contribute towards making this painting complete, you can spoil it by adding a color which you don't really need. So looking back at my hand, I've got, uh, there's already a pink there. So what I could do is I can spoil it. I can add an extra pink because there's already a pink there. I don't need another pink. And I put it on the other side of the card. This is to say that I've spoiled the painting. I've added a bit of color too much to this painting. Ah! Okay, but you can only do one card for spoiling. If eventually there is a third card added to the spoiler painting like this, the player that played that third card will be giving the other player or players the five points marked in this corner. So you keep this card face like this, but you put that in front of them. So at the moment, if my opponent did that, I'd have a score of nine points. And so play will continue like that. You're either adding colors which are needed to finish the painting, or you're adding colors which are already added and you've done too much, or colors which are not even required of the painting. This will keep going around until one player hits 25 points, or 25 gajillion dollars worth of paintings in front of them. Player with the most points is the winner, and they crack open a bottle of champagne while the others sit and drink their cups of tea. Is it off? Can you see it? It's there. Yeah, you can see it. Tea. So before I sum up with my review, I just want to tell you a story. Maybe you'll find it interesting, or maybe you'll just find it's like a nice way to make this video longer. <laughs> Uh, early this year, I went to Paris Air Ludique, which is a weekend event set up in Paris where all the French publishing houses get together and they set up these tents, and because it's an outdoor event, and they put out all their games and their new stuff. They also let a few Belgian publishers in as well, which is, which is nice, I suppose. But anywho, that's beside the point. When I passed the Space Cowboys booth and I saw Final Touch, the Final Touch, and I go crazy with desire. Yeah. Um, I was pleasantly surprised to see Mike Elliott's name on it. And I thought, Mike Elliott only designs like fantasy games because I'm used to him from Thunderstone and I'm used to him from Quarriers as well as uh, Lost Legends. And it was, it was a nice surprise. And I said to my wife, you know, my daughter, come on, let's, let's try this game out. Let's try this game. And we sat down and we learned it very quickly. And um, we actually came home from Paris with a copy. Now, this is not a review copy. And in fact, this is not a copy that I actually purchased. This is actually a copy that my daughter purchased. She's nine years old, but she kind of like fell in love with the art and the theme of the game. Because again, recently she went to the Louvre and she saw most of these paintings in, in their real variety. It's a French word, I think. But anywho, she saw the paintings and she loved the, 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 the kind of interpretation, the comedic um, versions of these paintings. And she was able to tell me stories about this painting. Oh, did you know that that painting was painted by so-and-so? Oh, I've seen that painting. Oh, I like that painting. And um, so she, this sits in her collection of games. And I think that it's there just primarily because it has a good memory for her. You know, a memory of us being in Paris together playing the game and also a memory of her being at the Louvre. So summing up for the final touch, it is a board game that everybody should buy as a present for their non-gamer friends. This is a great entry level game for non-gamers because it is a simple card game. It is. It has that familiarity of very, very uh, normal kind of trick-taking games. But it is a push-your-luck game where you're actually like all sat around the table with hammers and you're banging this nail in and you're trying to see who is the last player who's going to bang that nail flush. The game comes with some great components. The, well, the, the, card, the cards themselves are very good quality. The fact that all the paint cards have shapes on them as well as the colours. So colour blind people or people that can't recognise the difference between two colours can 
easily play. The insert holds with the cards brilliantly and as I said you could use the box insert on the table which is fantastic as well. The art on the cards is beautiful, it's funny but it's not going to be like funny in a munch, it is funny in a munchkin way because you laugh at it the first time you see it, the second time you giggle at it and then the third time that you look see that picture you're like okay yeah this is the game. Um, there's about 25 paintings in the game and when you play one round, one, one game, you're not going to see all those pictures. You'll see around about five to ten of those images at a time. This is a very quick light playing game. It plays within about 10 to 15 minutes. With a two player game it's a head to head. In a three player game it's a head to head again but uh, when you give points away to the other players you give it to both players and that's a contributing factor to losing the game quite quickly. You have to be really careful because someone might be like one or two points away from winning and if you give both the other players the, uh, two or three or maybe five points, that's it, game over man, you, you've lost. But it becomes interesting in a four player game because it plays like, as I said, a traditional card game where you'll have a partner sat opposite you. And so like together you're working together to try and be the, the one that taps the nail on the head last and uh, it, it can lead to some giggles and some and some funny moments just like other card games do like tr taking trump card games so is this game my cup of tea more tasty tea yeah it falls in between yeah it's a cup of tea that i wouldn't mind drinking every now and again um it doesn't have great replayability you play it the once and then you're like yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Um, there are other games in this kind of genre which keep me going, like uh, The Great Del Muti and even Uno. I don't know what it is about Uno that, that just makes me want to keep playing and playing it. In this game, you play a game, someone will win, and then you're like, okay, I'm done. But in a way, it, it's good in that aspect because it's, it's not really aimed at me. It's probably aimed at people trying to get into gaming um, again it's, an, it's a great villa you know you wait for another game to finish you got two or three of you or four of you sat around you can just crack this open and play it quite quickly so there you have it that's the final touch is it a board game for your collection or is it a board game that you should buy for a friend and get them started on their collection hmm I'll leave it up to you so uh, thanks for watching this video please go and check out boardgameseverybodyshould.com a website that I set up with all my reviews and videos on it also, if you want to, like us on Facebook. Like this video if you like it. Obviously, if you like it. Um, and if you would like to support this show, I have set up a Patreon. You can go and chuck a few pennies my way. Um, there are, There is a goodie that you might be able to win as well in a giveaway. So um, go and check it out. The link's down below in the show notes. And there's also links at the end of this video. So again, thanks for watching. Ciao for now, and don't forget that you don't have to own every single board game out there. You just need to own a few good ones. Good, good, good. Uh, let's recap. We go in, we take control, and we demand the government step down, right? Right. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, you're not a traitor, are you? Me? No. Okay. Ready? Three, two, a one. Ha! Aha! It's you. You're the traitor. No, I'm not. Look! I just must have played the wrong blinking card. <laughs> and you say, do you say Godfather? Do you say, you know, maybe it was the wedding, you know, I forget sometimes. But you say, do you call me Godfather? Do you show me respect? Because you, know, you, you, you have to be f <sighs> You have to be from New Jersey or from New York to really do the accent, I'm telling you. So, well, you don't, know, don't <laughs> you know, you're... <laughs> <laughs> say, say hello to my little friend. A cup of tea. That's the wrong mob. <laughs> <laughs>